up guys what's going on it's your boy cars with beige and uh i have something special today something most of you really disliked but it's my car so i'm gonna do it anyway and it's in this box this will be your first indication of what it is that's going back on the car the horn pad for the what is this uh, the benetton formula one f1 steering wheel i forgot what it was a lot of people think this is from the Harlequin Volkswagen Golfs. It's not, it, they just both happen to be very colorful. So in here I have the horn pad and some ring adapter I think for the horn or something. There's some wiring and soldering I have to do to get the horn to work. I remember it was a pain last time so it'll probably be a pain this time. And then I believe this was called the Momo Boss Kit which uh, allows that steering wheel to go under the hub of the car without issue. So uh, let's take out the old one and then we'll get this one put on. All right, so here's the wheel that's in it currently. It's uh, some Saab wheel. It's a nice steering wheel. It's very cool. It definitely fits the car well, and uh, especially because it has the red stitching and the black, and this car has the black interior and then the red carpet. But because of my history with this car, I just have to put the old wheel back in. So to get this out, there's a bunch of flathead screws right here. And then if we go around to the back of the wheel, I think that's in focus, hopefully. Uh, you can see there's just some small uh, nuts back here that you take off. So I'm going to undo all these and then the wheel will come off. So I'm in the Bentley manual right here for how to remove the steering wheel, which I know how to do, but I forgot what size the bolt was. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing information about uh, the size of the bolt. But one important thing they do have in here is the tightening torque. And whenever I'm putting anything kind of important back on the car, I always torque it to the spec that's uh, specified in one of these Bentley manuals. So this is the 8-valve manual, and I also have the 16-valve manual somewhere. These are really important to have if you have one of these cars. Uh, huge help in working on them. Through some trial and error, I was able to figure out that the bolt holding the steering wheel onto the steering column is a 22 millimeter. So I have this and my torque wrench. Now let's take it off. All right, so this adapter was really stuck on there and I'm actually shocked that it was only on there for two years, but the thing, it was harder to take off than the original steering wheel that I got this car with the first time. So I tried pulling on it as you saw in the time lapse and that didn't really do anything. I have this tool here which is designed to remove uh, interior trim clips from cars so you slide it in and the clip goes in the little hole it has in there and then it pops them out. What I actually ended up doing is just sticking this under here and I made sure I got it around like the place that the hub bolts into and then I pulled along with pulling with my hand and that got it off pretty well. Uh, one thing I really forgot to mention that is of utmost importance is that you need to make sure the wheels are straight when you're doing this because you see these little ridges here that is what the adapters go around and that's how when you turn it it turns the wheel because they lock into each other it's almost like a gear mechanism if you will so that turns it um, if this isn't straight when you put the new steering wheel on it's going to be at an angle when you're going straight and it'll be very awkward and you'll probably have to redo it I uh, kind of made a bit of a mess of the passenger seat, but that's okay. Okay, so I had stopped yesterday, but now I'm continuing today. So when I'm doing this, I just screwed the wheel into the hub uh, just to hold it on. Because if I were to put the hub in without the wheel, uh, I wouldn't exactly know where the wheel was going to line up straight. So right here looks about right. Let's see if we can get it on. Perfect. So that should be straight and that looks pretty good there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the bolt on and I'm gonna tighten it a bit then I'm gonna take the wheel back off and then I'm gonna tighten the bolt fully because I have to do some work to get the horn to work to be totally honest with you I made a mistake in trying to tighten this without the steering wheel on it because then the steering wheel would have been aligned properly and when you're tightening that bolt it spins the steering column not the column it spins the the, you know what I mean it turns the wheels so unfortunately I've kind of lost where my center was so I think I'm just gonna bolt the steering wheel on really quick and then take the car out for a quick drive and see how badly aligned it is and then fix it depending on that this is straight 
let's show you real quick. That's not that, but like when it's like this, the car is going straight. So uh, the steering wheel is like one point off. So I'll just pivot it this way and it should be totally good. Don't worry, I was just doing that in my driveway. I wasn't recording on the street and driving. It's better. So now this is straight. I'm going to try to pull it off once more and see if I can get it kind of one notch over, which should be perfect. If I can't, this will be fine. I was able to move it one notch over, which brings it to about here. This is as close to dead center as I'm going to get it, and I'm satisfied with that. Fortunately, I didn't record that part, but it's not really that interesting. I just got it tight. You can hear if I can. Yeah, it's... I have to hold the wheel with one hand and do this, but you'll hear the torque wrench click right there. So that's the, uh, I think I have it at 20 foot pounds. So the hub is in, the steering wheel's in, uh, properly aligned. Now I gotta do some more work on this horn. All right, here's the horn pad. And I remember that I had soldered this wire onto this and it was connected to this ring that goes in between the steering wheel and the hub. Now, I don't specifically remember why I had done this. I think it was as a ground or something like that. And then there's a wire that comes to the hub, and I remember that slid in right here uh, for the horn button to work. So I need to do that again. Uh, I'm just going to reconnect these like I had before and then put it back together. So this time around, I'm just using one of these small little quick disconnects, and I'm just attaching it to here because, as you see, uh, it'll slide right on here. Before, I'd soldered it onto the back of this, and it never had a great connection, so... This should hopefully avoid a horn failure at any point. saw I screwed the steering wheel in uh, this metal ring that goes on the outside is for the horn pad to slip around basically which you'll see I'll do another time lapse all right so there it is the steering wheel is finally back in and the car is starting to feel like its old self a bit so you can see it's back the horn pad pretty easy to put on just slides around that a little bit loose but that's okay the steering wheel I think is from 89 it's stated on the back here that's going to be it for today's video, so hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, uh, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to try to start posting a lot more. Uh, a couple other cars I might be interested in picking up, so could be interesting summer. Thanks, guys.